So we're going to talk about horse racing, a subject which I don't know very much about, so I'm hoping to learn a lot. And our speaker is Kangiki Kusano, who is the general manager of the Japan Racing Association's London office, and he's been here for about a year. Um, and his uh, speciality is as an equine vet, um, where he has uh, a great deal of experience, and obviously dealing particularly with racing-related issues, uh, including horse welfare, uh, doping control, prevention of accidents, and so on. Um, so he got a doctorate in veterinary medicine from the University of Tokyo in 2009, um, and a license for Hong Kong in 2011. Um, in 2017, he was recognized as a, an authorized veterinarian by the International Federation for Equestrian Sports. And he's um, actually served as vice chairman of the International Group of Specialist Regulatory Veterinarians. Um, and he also is part-time lecturer uh, at the University of Tokyo's School of Agricultural and Life Sciences. Um, so, I mean, I think that's, that's a very useful background because obviously one of the issues that many people have about horse racing is about the welfare of the horses. So you're in a particularly strong position to uh, tell us about that. But I'm sure there are plenty of other things you're going to tell us about. So please, over to you, Mr. Would you like to come over here? Yes, I will. Okay, Jason-san, thank you so much for your kind introduction. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me to this um, lovely venue with lovely guests. Um, I'm not sure how many of you know about horse racing. How, how many of you have been to horse racing? Wow. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It makes it quite easy then. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm going to talk about some basics of horse racing. Because I know we only have about half an hour for my presentation. We will have Q and A and maybe before we wrap we might have some drinks so we can get I can get more um, deep questions at, 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 at later time. But still um, thank you so much for inviting me. So I will start with my um, presentation. So this is my quick introduction. Um, Jason has already gave a quite a broad introduction, but as you can see, I'm a vet. I'm just a horse vet. Um, so I, I used to do a lot of surgery. This is me opening up the horse's abdomen, because horses get twisted into the spine quite often. So I served at the Tokyo Olympic. I shoot. I cook. I ride horses. Um, I have a family. So, that's me. <laughs> so, today, I'm going to talk about how wonderful horse racing is, and you're lucky to live in UK, which you started a modern horse racing. So, UK is a country who started a wonderful sport, wonderful event for um, mankind, and I think if you're living in UK, you should know that as a basis, but still, I think it's really important to note that we, Japan, have learned a lot from the UK about horse racing, and that's why we're succeeding currently. And I might just touch on some challenging issues that we have as a horse racing industry. So this is something that might need your help for a long-term sustainability for horse racing. So, I'm so sorry, I only know about horses and race horses, and races, so, this way. So, um, I'll start with what I do here in London. So, the Japan Racing Association have been here for more than 30 years. And the reason why we have an office in London is because we've got a... Um, a big international race for the Japan Cup, which is dated in 26th of November this year. So the, the role of the JRA London representative office is to, to promote Japan Cup to UK and Irish connections. So I'm here to introduce Japanese racing, and I'm here to recruit European runners to come to Japan for racing. To achieve that, we 
host racing, um, actually we, we sponsor racing, we meet a lot of relevant people in UK, so there will be a lot of um, racing organizers coming from Japan to meet relevant people in the UK, and in that case I do um, introduce them, I work as an interpreter, so that is what, and we go to Royal Ascot and big events, I get interviews, we get Japanese jockeys coming over to ride, and here I went shooting with very famous 10 horse trainers this January, and this is some kind of, um, it looks like, it looks fun, it was fun, but this is a very um, uncommon way to build strong connections with the trainers and owners living in Europe or UK. So this is kind of a broad picture what I do here in UK. So I'm going to show you two videos. First one is a video introducing horse racing in the UK. And the next video will be introducing Japanese horse racing. And I think by watching those two different videos, you'll be able to understand the difference of the both two racing. So this is about three minutes. We love coming here at Racing the Goodwood. Um, for an owner, it's just the most idiosyncratic track you could possibly find. Uh, in the glorious um, Sussex Hills here, and it's a stone's throw from London. So having a horse racing here is, is fantastic, and we, we love to send our horses here. We have a, a real variety of tracks, and uh, it's a real test for thoroughbreds. And so I think that's um, a, a reason why we've been the leading breeder of the thoroughbred in recent years in, his in history, because we have the most fantastic tracks. Most conventional tracks around the rest of the world are, are oval shaped and um, you know, left handed, usually occasionally right handed. And so, you know, we're, we're joy lucky to um, have the, the different tests we do have here in England. Why the race in Britain is the best is because I do think they've got the best horses, uh, the best breeding, some of the best jockeys in the world, and uh, they can compete at the highest level anywhere in the world. You go to America, every race track is a left hand track. Um, you know, we have short, short straights and two turns. Whether in England, you know, the likes of Goodwood and Epsom and Newmarket, you know, it's got their own uh, character, and uh, every single track is different, and um, that's what makes it, I think, I'd say probably more difficult for the jockeys uh, to compete uh, in UK is the uh, to, to understand the, the race courses really. The atmosphere is very unique in you know in the English racing uh, compared to other countries, especially Royal Ascot, uh, the Glorious Goodwoods. Passion for, for the horses is it, second to none, and uh, when we get a big crowd and you know we're lucky enough, especially you know for Royal Ascot when the Manchester <coughs> team turns up and uh, you know the, the likes of Epsom Derby weekend, it's like I said, it, it, it's second to none. You know what I absolutely love about the racing in Britain um, is that it's a fantastic mix between the social occasion and uh, the top class racing. Um, so obviously you've got your uh, your top meetings like your Royal Ascots, your York, um, your, your July Cup at, at Newmarket. A British racing festival, uh, you've got all the pomp of everyone dressing up, you've got the, you know, the best horses competing against each other, which for me a racing fan is key, um, and then you have got the most fantastic scenery, whether it be Goodwood here today uh, on the Sussex Downs, or Cheltenham with the, uh, the Cleve Hill in the background, you know, it's just, it's, it's absolutely fantastic the scenery that you're, you're racing amongst. You can see by the attendances you get at the big festivals how much everyone loves it. Hugely, we um, English love a picnic, and there's usually a, a lovely picnic to go to, and uh, it's, it's great, great fun. And uh, it really starts to stay off very well, and you, know, you can come into the track then, and um, they look after us so well here. You know, have a lovely lunch, and do all they can to, and to look after you. So um, hopefully you see some fantastic racehorses. We're all here because of them, and it's, it's a fantastic day. I don't think you can beat it. So um, this is just a piece of uh, 
uh, UK racing. It's elegant, and you can see how they present well and they talk about beauty of the racing, beauty of the race courses, hospitality. I'm going to show you a next slide which gives you a totally different angle. And this is about Japanese racing. Japan Cup. The first international invitational race since 1981. The winners of Group 1 races such as the Arc de Triomphe and international derbies gather from all over the world at the Tokyo Racecourse to compete in one of the world's most prestigious races. There has to be a real champion to come from abroad to win here. I think the Japan Cup would be a great target for Australian horses. It's a great experience, or would be a great experience for the connections of the horse. Especially the Java Cup is very nice because you have the international atmosphere. Every year we have uh, some foreign horses come to, to Japan and uh, we have some foreigners win in the Japan Cup as well. I think it's a good track for the Japan Cup and for invited European horse. I think they have just to come, uh, the horses from Europe and they have to try because it's big track and like Europe. It is considered an honor to participate in this race. As the race day approaches, enthusiasm spreads not only throughout Japan, but various media outlets from overseas focus on a race which is watched by millions of people in Japan alone. We would jederzeit wiederkommen, natürlich am liebsten mit einem Pferd, was auch gut genug ist, um hier berechtigt zu laufen. The prize money seems fantastic. I was here 27 years ago. It was great then, but I think it's better now. If I have a horse good enough, I would always love to come back. World-class race, superb hospitality. The horses' connections are invited from overseas and enjoy authentic Japanese food while being immersed in Japanese culture. As soon as they arrive in Japan, they'll be treated with the very best omotenashi, which is the utmost hospitality. We had the first time already an incredible impression of the friendliness, the attention, the care. And that was in this year also confirmed. And actually, it is for us always like when we come home. I have to say I love the uh, Japan, uh, Japanese food. It's been very good. I really enjoyed the uh, hospitality. Ja, noch dazu ist äh, hier alles für uns äh, super organisieren. Ähm, wir sind sehr, sehr gut äh, aufgehoben. Äh, der Organ Organisation kann nicht besser sein. Japanese Racing Fans are the most enthusiastic in the world. People line up for up to a week to get the best location to watch the race. At its peak, <laughs> Tokyo Race Course is filled with more than 100,000 people. They clap to the beat of fanfare before the race. And as the anticipation of both fans and connections reaches its climax, the also racing is in Japan is fantastic, you know. When we never see like the fun when you go to the racetrack like here in Japan they ask you sign and they come for see you in Europe as happen like this. Uh, certainly the fans here in Japan are very com compassionate about the horses and you know they, they really want up to watch the race. In the Japan Cup day uh, there's about uh, there's more than hundred thousand people on the race course. Uh, cheering for the horses before the race and during the race. Uh, I think it's a must seen uh, competition. The winner and its connections receive the greatest applause and accolades as they are paraded as the victor.
This is a very special experience that can only be seen in Japan. These people, uh, the fans here in, in Japan obviously really love their racing and their big races and it's a very special reception for the winning connections. Next time, it's your turn. So, thank you for watching the video. So, I think it's quite obvious, even we talk about the same horse racing. Like, in the UK, you're more like a hospitality base, you have a history, you're more elegant, fancy, but compared to that, Japanese racing is more fan-based. It's more like a football match here. So I think we have a very close bond with the racing fans compared to the UK, but I'm sure there are pros and cons, but still, there is a significant difference between Japanese and UK racing. So I'll carry on. So some basic information, maybe you've already noticed, but I'll start about explaining some horses. Because if you don't have horses, we won't have racing. So the rela relationship between horses and mankind is for more than 500 years. So they started to be a hunting target, livestock, and then they will be transitioned to helping people used for wars and power for agriculture. So a horse is an animal which I would say was created to live with mankind. And nowadays, um, the horses are competing in sports, equestrian, um, leisure riding, festivals. Um, they're, they're actually um, helping human therapies. And I'm not sure whether this is a drawback, but um, there is a few countries that still consume horse meat. So this is horses. This is about horses horse's history and I'll move on to the history of what we call modern racing. So you should be very proud that UK is the birth of modern racing. You invented this modern racing. So it started about more than 300 years ago and the reason why the, the, the UK is called the, the home of racing is that it's not just you literally raced horses, but you have um, installed a system which all of the racing countries now um, learnt and copies. So in particular, the modern racing which is on the left side corner of the slide shows, it controls pedigree. So we use a breed called thoroughbreds. So for the thoroughbreds, you need a strict control of pedigree, which we call it a stud book, and that has been conducted by a man or a company called Weatherbees, and because you have a jockey club who harmonize the rules so that people can um, safely join or participate in horse racing, and keeping the record is very important because if you don't have a record, if you're trying to match horse with horses, it should be based on the past performance records and create handicaps or whatever and you do need racing calendar to say when you'll be holding what kind of race so these all came from UK so that's why this system is the mother of horse racing and that was created in UK so thoroughbreds the definition of thoroughbred is it has to be a pure breed and it has to be an eight consecutive generation bred with thoroughbred, which means a thoroughbred must be born from a thoroughbred for more than eight generations. And how do you, um, how do you um, achieve that? You need a stud book or proper record. So that's why a proper modern horse racing all comes back to a proper recording of bloodstock. And if you trace back all the racehorses living right now, comes to these three, just three pedigrees, progenies. It's quite interesting. Dali, Arabian, Bayerly, Tark, 
Godot in the Arabian, they will all come back to one of these forces. And this is thoroughbred. So, so over 300 years, the pedigree has been strictly managed by the Weatherbees, and what, that's why sometimes horse racing is called blood sport, because it controls the blood. Okay, so nowadays, modern horse racing is conducted in over more than 90 countries. But among us, those 19 countries, these 16 countries are called part one. They manage the highest standard levels of horse racing. So as you can see in Europe, UK, Germany, Ireland, and France, you already have four high standard racing. And because we learned a lot from UK, we now are part of 16 high-end countries. And for others, Australia, New Zealand, UAE, South Africa, Canada, USA, Peru, Brazil, Argentina, Chile. And those 16 <coughs> countries are the supreme race, ho race horsing countries. And we want to keep these alliances because we have a very good balance in the content of holding a high standard race. So we don't want any countries to be lost from that top 16. So we have to cooperate. So some basic information about UK racing, as it appeared in the video, main racing form is on turf, grass, which is using natural terrain. So like 300 years ago, um, aristocrats used to see a, a, a huge field and say, oh, let's have horse racing. So it's a natural terrain is one um, characteristic of UK racing. And you also have jump and hurdle races, which are very popular, which are not very popular in Japan. So this is another characteristic of UK racing. And you have one of the highest racing standards. So you have good horses, and you have races with very high standard horse participating. And as you can see, you have 59 race horses all over the continent. All of the, all of the courses are different. So this is also a significant difference between the Japanese racing and your racing. So back to Japan. Um, we started what we call a modern style racing in 1862. So this was um, organized by British and other European residents living in Yokohama. So there used to be a race course in Yokohama, which now is a museum. But um, as you can see, Samurai is on the horse racing, which is quite <coughs> interesting. <laughs> so, so, so we did race quite a long time ago. We've been racing for more than close to 200 or 150 years. So just to give you some understanding of the core activities of Japan Racing Association, because we operate everything. We operate betting, we operate the regulation, we, we operate rules, and we operate actually stage race meetings. While in the UK, you have like tote and bookmakers for betting, for regulations, you have British Horse Racing Authority, for the race meetings, you have race courses. So unlike Japan, the elements are fragmented in the UK, which is sometimes good, but sometimes uh, could be a, a drawback as an industry. But this is just just a comparison of how differently we operate horse racing between the UK and Japan. So some fixtures. Um, I don't want to bore you with some um, numbers, but in Japan we have Jerry, we have 10 race horses. We also have another racing authority run by local governments. So we have 25 race horses in total. In comparison, you have 59. But if you see the numbers of the races at the bottom, um, summing up JRA and NAR races, we have more racing features compared to the UK. So 
it's a, it's a it's a kind of a um, unique comparison, but this is a fact, and um, this is quite interesting because you got fifty nine race horses and you only operate ten thousand races. But the interesting thing is you race almost every day except for Christmas Day, and that's very unique as well. So this is just fixtures. And this is another slide to explain how a business model differs between Japan and um, the UK. For Japan, because we operate betting, so all the revenues are from the betting. So um, compared to that, in the UK, you've got race goals expenditure, which is like um, entry admission tickets. Um, drinks and food at the race courses, you have sponsorship, media rights, owner's entry fees. So the revenue, the, the, the elements of the revenue or the business model is completely different. Mm. So I don't have the correct numbers from the UK because it's quite difficult to obtain the correct <coughs> numbers. So, so just, just to give a, a brief idea. So for the JRA NAR, as a whole Japan, if you start with the numbers of owners, we have less number of owners. <coughs> we have equivalent number of trainers. Um, work riders, it's difficult to compare. Groom, jockeys, quite, I would say, equivalent. Breeders, we have less breeders compared to the UK. And for the right <coughs> side of the slides, um, for, for, for the owners, I think, we, we do have quite a good comparison. And we do produce close to 8,000 foals per year, while you produce <coughs> almost less than 5,000 <coughs> horses per year. So, so as a breeding country, we are fourth largest country in the world. And I think UK is like fifth or fifth. Still large, but we tend to be, we, we, we kind of, we grew bigger than UK now. So uh, this is also another fact. So some challenging issues, um, we do encounter a lot of problems. So I think that the major issue is how we can <coughs> sustain horse racing in the long term. So we have labor shortage because you have to work very hard to <coughs> keep a horse or to ride a horse. You have to work from early in the morning, you might not get paid much as other um, work. So not many new participants are joining. And some diversity is another um, um, item. So um, labor shortage, new participants are the, the um, common issues across the world. It's not just UK and Japan. It's a, a huge issue that we share among all racing countries. So environmental issues, you might not understand why, but surprisingly, like in the UK, uh, just for example, in the UK, you have 59 race courses, which means there's only two or three major training centers in the UK, which means you're transporting a lot of horses around your continent, which means you're not environmentally um, friendly, in a way. And like for breeding, because for the thoroughbreds, we don't allow um, artificial insemination, which means only natural covering can be done for the thoroughbred. So if you have a sire, you have to bring all the mares from all the countries or across the country to come. So some, come, some horses come by road, some horses come by, by, by plane, so which is causing some environmental issues, according to some studies. So welfare. So if we race in hot summer, people start complaining, uh, isn't it crude? Cru I mean, isn't it um, bad for horses' um, um, health? Isn't it cruel? Also whip, people think we're hitting the horse. Actually, we're not, but people will think we're hitting the horse. 
and for the second career because horses, like in Japan, they retire at the age of four. So what happens for the rest of 20 years? So that kind of thing is a worker of horses. And for the human, nowadays, because um, jockey's health is becoming, uh, is growing, so if the horse has an um, accident, people get injured. And because of the hard work, they do have mental health issues. So that's becoming a much a greater problem as an industry. And I will touch on some of that later, but there are lots of emerging doping agents because uh, the, the science is advancing day by day. So these are the kind of the challenging issues we have, and they're not always easy to solve. So just to, sorry, I'm kind of exceeding my time, so I'll be very quick. So I'll just, just quickly touch on one issue related to doping, which is a term called gene doping. So nowadays, because of the advance, advancement of um, uh, science, there is a therapy called gene therapy. So we're using DNAs and RNAs for therapy, like COVID vaccines, they're DNA vaccines or RNA vaccines. So if you abuse them, it's simply a gene doping. So it's not something really special, but the, the materials of the medicine is changing into a natural ingredients. So that's why we use a new term called gene doping. And why is this a problem? Why is this a huge problem? Is Of course, it damages the integrity of the sport, but it also threatens the integrity of the thoroughbred because we race so hard to, to sustain the integrity of the breed. So I'll just show you why this is um, happening. So, so this is just um, basic information. So transition of drug, drug development. So it used to be natural ingredients. So, so some of the um, antibiotics were found in cheese um, molds. And they're kind of coming into synthetic and genetic recombination, so enzymes. So, so th there's a transition of drug development. And nowadays, we use DNAs and RNAs for a drug. So that's why if that has been abused, we call it a gene doping. So the worst case scenario of gene doping. The good thing about genetic therapy is very effective, but sometimes affects the next generation. So I think you understood how important to control the breed of thoroughbred. So if we use genetic therapy, and by an accident, if that was being transformed or carried to the next generation, that horse will not be regarded as a thoroughbred. So if once that happens, and if you don't find out instantly, that horse will start producing progenies. And like in like 10 years time, if the science was more advanced, we, we start to find genetic thoroughbred, gen genetically modified thoroughbred. We're going to have to erase all of those thoroughbreds from the stud book, and all the records of the racing will be invalid, which is a crisis. So that's why this is something we have to be careful. And I used to be working on this um, area, so that's why I just wanted to quickly introduce this something that's really emerging. So some some new things that I've been doing in UK. So I do invite. I do, I do try to combine racing and introducing Japanese cultures. So we did some event introducing Japanese food at the race courses. And if you do that, chefs get kind of um, united. And um, we do introduce like Japanese wine at the jockey club. So this is a stable that we sponsor, having a retired race horses. So um, Japanese government gave away some sakura trees. So we did some event at the new market. And from the culture-wise, we did give, actually we donated a, a giant painting to the horse club, which was painted by a Japanese painter. And we, JRA, supported um, bringing this huge picture in, in container from Japan to the UK. And it did cost quite a lot. <laughs> but it was useful because it kind of strengthened the bond between Japan and the UK, just not by racing, but from another element or another aspect of horses. 
and which is very um, interesting and unique. Only I think Japan and UK could do, do this kind, this kind of thing. So, so um, what I want to conclude is we are very successful as a horse racing country, much to the higher standard of a horse, UK horse racing, so we do thank a lot for the UK horse racing. And because of that background, if there are any difficulties in the UK horse racing, we are happy to work together, collaborate, so that we can contribute in the long sustainability of the horse racing. So what I, I, I would like you to take back as a message is that we, Japan and UK, has a very good bond relate, related to horse racing, and we would love to um, continuously work together to um, expand the racing industry. So I'm sorry if I stay saving my time, but thank you for listening. Thank you.